Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Sosa. I'm a software engineer who talks about engineering things and sometimes finance. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about DevOps, getting into the field, the some of the skills that you need or in order to be successful. And so if that's interesting to you, make sure to stick around for the rest of the video. So if you don't know, if you didn't watch the video that I've made in the past, I am a software engineer who specializes, quote unquote, in DevOps and release engineering. If you want more context into what I do personally, make sure to check out that video. It's linked down below. If you're just starting out your career or you're interested in transitioning your career into DevOps, you should know that DevOps isn't necessarily a position title. It's more about a methodology and a way a company or a team or a team of teams goes about their processes when it comes to engineering. DevOps is just this way to bridge the gap between development and operations. There's an environment fostered of just like open communication and collaboration participation between these two sections. And these two sections could obviously hold a bunch of different sub teams and sub fields, but that's the, just the general way to describe DevOps, not necessarily a position, but just a way to go about doing things in engineering. But these days, a lot of companies do have DevOps positions and opportunities and titles. So with all that said, there are some core responsibilities that most DevOps engineers usually take on. So from my experience, but my limited experience, those responsibilities include infrastructure, monitoring, automation, networking, security, and release and deployment or CICD. Obviously, this is a lot to take in for just one role, but you know, not one person is gonna have all this experience and super in-depth knowledge about all these things. It's not necessary for you to be advanced in all of those topics, but it is kind of necessary for you to be at least proficient in most of them and maybe advanced in one or two. And there's no structured way of getting started in DevOps. Like there's not like you can get a bachelor's in it or anything like that. So for from my understanding, there's usually two ways that people get into this subfield. And it's either one, it's a developer or software engineer like me who's interested in infrastructure and operations, or two, it could be a system administrator who has really strong development skills. So regardless of whichever path you take, think about the foundational knowledge, programming, cloud, and operating system. That's Linux, usually Python, and AWS. So those are the three categories that you you really want to focus on if you're just starting as a person who wants to transition into this field. So starting with Linux, so there's no law really saying in order to be a DevOps engineer, you have to be only working in a Linux environment. That's not necessarily true, but most of the job opportunities are Linux based. So Linux is something that you'll have to learn and keep learning. And the best way to go about that is just to install it at home and use it as much as you can. If you have a Mac, that's pretty easy just open up terminal and you know look at some man pages or try to look at some exercises online in order to uh, learn more about the operating system. Or you can download um, and install Fedora or Ubuntu and do the same thing. Kind of maneuver the operating system, not using the GUI, not using UI, not using your mouse or clicking on anything like that, but just using the command line. And it's something that I wanna do and I might actually start making videos about my process and learning more about Linux so we can hopefully learn together. And of course, the programming language of choice for most DevOps opportunities is Python. And also Python is really prominent in AI and machine learning. So if you ever wanted to transition into that field, you'd be set. <laughs> Last but not least, the foundational skill that you'd wanna pick up on AWS or Amazon Web Services. And this is a cloud platform, I guess is the best way to put it. Without AWS knowledge, it's almost, almost I say, uh, at least these days, it's almost impossible to be Honestly, it's almost impossible to see a DevOps position or you know job description without seeing AWS somewhere. So if you don't have a solid understanding about AWS and how the public cloud works, then you could be sitting at a disadvantage compared to other applicants or candidates who are applying for the same position. So if you wanna get more knowledge in AWS and the cloud in general, I think AWS actually has some really cool programs to kind of take you through each of their 
all their offerings so that you can get a better understanding of it. You can also get certified in the cloud for AWS and become a certified DevOps engineer. That could be something that you could work towards if you wanted to be able to gain some skills while also getting recognized for getting those skills. In order to gain more experience in this foundational knowledge, you should try to set aside 20 to 30 minutes a day to learn Linux, Python, and AWS. And if for any reason you have more skills in one than the other, then put more time or emphasis into something else or some other piece of it. So if you're, you know, if you're better versed in Python, then don't put as much time into it. If you're not going to be learning anything, put more time into Linux and AWS. Just kind of allocate your time depending on your current skill set and build on that foundational knowledge. And remember, this is in addition to all of the other things that you kind of have to pick up on, but this foundation and this core will really help you in all of the, you know, categories that we were talking about earlier and give you a solid understanding of what's happening in the space of DevOps. And then again, from there, from that foundation, you can then move into some of the more advanced topics and tools. We covered quite a lot that encompasses DevOps. It can be really intimidating and I completely understand it. Honestly, I still feel intimidated 99% of the time when I'm looking at, you know, positions and kind of even just looking at where my team's currently at because they're all, you know, senior engineers and what they've been doing. So it can be really, really, really intimidating trying to catch up, get up to speed when you're new in the field. But once you have those foundational pieces and maybe one or two other tools that you've played around with, don't be afraid to start applying to jobs because a lot of companies are willing to take somebody on to teach them not necessarily the foundational things because if you can't code or if you don't really know Linux, then they might not be willing to take you on. But if you have that foundational knowledge and you just need to learn the tools and you have a good understanding of how everything works together, companies are more likely to want to take a chance on you because they can spend maybe six months to a year kind of training you on the tools that they use. And honestly, six months is to a year is just a number that I made up, but X amount of time. <laughs> and they can train you on whatever tools they use because the tools don't matter. What matters is the concepts that you're learning because they're very much transferable from one tool to the next. For example, my company used Chef when I first started and then, which is, uh, I think it's the configuration management tool. Um, so we started using Chef when I first started two and a half years ago. And then a year later, we started started using salt and now we're moving to Ansible. And so within two and a half years, we've moved to to using multiple different tools. And that's kind of what I'm talking about is like the tools don't necessarily matter. What matters are the concepts. From learning uh, Chef all the way to learning Ansible, what it does doesn't change. Like what we're trying to achieve doesn't change, but the tool does. So having that understanding and that basic knowledge will serve you really well. Baby steps, you know, it takes time. If you're starting from scratch, you're not gonna <laughs> jump into being a DevOps engineer overnight, but it's definitely doable for people who are still new in the field. I mean, look at me. And so if you have any questions or concerns, if I didn't clarify anything as well as I could have, please, as always, leave a question down below, questions, comments, whatever. If you want a video series of like, you know, configuration management and CICD and all those other things that kind of involve DevOps as I was talking about earlier, let me know and I can work on a video series to take you from end to end of things that you should know. But yeah, I hope you like this video. Please again, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.